met Teddy along the red line. Wilson and Broadway to be exact. I'd come home from college to reconnect with my past. I never thought I'd find any part of it in a black barber shop. I'm at Sam here at Clippers and Shears. He came in as a walk-in. And um, from there we kind of connected. He was reading a book. Um, and I was interested in knowing what it was. And he told me that it was for a class. And from there I started to get nosy in his business. He told me it was for school. And he was in school for film. And so I decided I'd tell him a bit of my story. Teddy took me to a place I thought I'd seen many times before. Right over this bridge, Cabrini Green, right? that's where I come from. You know, I went to school like four blocks behind us at Division and Ashland. And my only memories of this neighborhood were driving over this bridge, I'll tell you, that was it. And there was the high rise right there, and there were like a whole row of them. And I used to, I used to drive by and you'd see it was caged off. It had the, it had the steel cages around it, you know what I'm talking right. about? Over like the hallways outside. Did you, you know? ever did you ever want to like go inside and see what was going on or I mean I think I was curious, but it was like a different world. Seven year old Dantrell Davis, as you know, was killed by a sniper last Tuesday as he walked to school. To be honest, all I knew about Cabrini was what I heard on the news. I was afraid to go in there. Meanwhile, for the second day in a row, police conducted a security sweep of buildings at Chicago's Cabrini Green Housing Complex. More than 160 Chicago police officers and CHA police took part. Three people arrested during the sweep on drug and weapons charges. John. A lot of people were afraid because of the stereotypes and the things that people would say about Cabrini Green. They probably thought that they would get robbed or approach to beat up, you know, from different gangs or what have you, shot at even. You know, fact of the matter is, there was people didn't just walk around and stick people up in Cabrini Green. You know, we were we were more so a family. What 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 are the good memories that you have? All of my memories were good, um, except for a few. I remember when we used to. Um, go to, I call it the Milk Dud Factory because that's what we used to get out of the machine. So it was this big, large, massive, like, garbage can of, guess, of like, reject chocolates that, the, um, that they threw out. So we used to go down there and we used to dig all. our hand and then get all the chocolates out we can, the Milk Duds, and come back, but we have big chocolates. Probably why I got holes in my teeth now, want. but, um, <laughs> yeah, we used to do that. And the smell of chocolate would just, even, even, even now today, that aroma would come through the air and just, man, just feel your nose. You'd be like, oh God, I want some chocolate, but yeah. So the green smelled like chocolate? They did. The green smelled like chocolate at times, <laughs> along with a lot of other stuff. Teddy and I walked down Division, the street we shared as children. The more he talked, the less I seemed to know. Yeah, man, um, this would be the first building right here, would be the first building you see coming from Halstead. This is what we call the Burling. The Burling? Yeah, the Burling building. 1230 this, Burling. This is the one I remember. What did the buildings that stood here look like in your memory? To me, I remember these guys. These are the ones, this is the, this Burling address is the one I pass by every day. Yeah. And I remember it was real tall, it was gray. It had the, the cage mm -hmm. right on the hallways. Oh yeah. That was an awesome view, though. I mean, it, it looked a little dangerous, probably from the people that were never in the building. But the the uh, gates were up there, um, pretty secure. So we used to climb the gates sometimes and get up there. God forbid one of them would have ever come apart, but yeah. they didn't. And um, so we used to look off the ramp, yell off the ramp, and all kind of stuff, see stuff, and all kinds of stuff. We used to fight, fight, fight. You run, down, you run downstairs, you want to see who <laughs> fight, or you may want to stay upstairs and watch the fight because you got a better view. So, yeah, but I started, all, I started out over here in the white walls in the building. They call it the Jude. That was my building, 534 West Division, right behind the fire station. That's where I started out. Yeah, my building was right here. This was the front. We used to play softball out here. This was a big old field right here. We played football out here when the snow came down. We had a, the building was 16 stories high. I was on the 12th floor. 
we as kids used to, it was a ramp, it was gates that you, they had um, gates where they were not um, pulled off. You could actually put your finger through and, you know, pull it down a little heavy. But I from down here can see the people on the ramp, and the ramp can see down here. So we used to be on the ramp with long ramps with no, um, no, no closed off cars. And so we would start at the middle of the building. And on your mark, you set go, and all the kids would be like, it would be like five over here and five over here, and we would run this way. Uh -huh. And then we'd go downstairs to the 11th floor and come all the way back around, pass each other up on the 11th floor, come back, come back up, and then meet back in the middle. Whoever gets to the middle first is the winner of the race. But there was one incident that was not so fortunate for me. I was taking that run, and I was running this way. Uh -huh. And um, there's a little wall that kind of sticks out before you turn the corner and go in the hall. And I don't think they did on purpose because I was kind of shoved and I ran into it and hit my face on the wall. And this see, this tooth is still chipped. I think I was probably like um, nine, ten years old at the time. It's a little chip right there. So there was a, a window right here that went all the way up on the side. And I came down one day to see um, somebody with a blanket laid over him because he just had his brains blown out by somebody from the building over here. They snuck over and shot him, you know, and it was daylight outside. So, you know, that was a difficult moment, you know, one that of course we don't want to have to encounter, but I mean, it happened. But still, that didn't just stop and make all of my, the rest of my days bad here. You know? So how does it feel to walk through your old building? Or where your building once stood? Man, this I man, this this was a this was a awesome time in life for me. I would love to see the snow on the ground and play football again in the snow. We played tackle football. I'd love to do the haunted house again in October. I'd love to do the races on the ramp, maybe run into another wall and crack the other side of my tooth. <laughs> I don't know. You know, I would I would love to do those things. I would love to play catch a girl, kiss a girl and you know, you probably just like to kiss a girl, though. Well, I mean, it may be, but I mean, it, still, it was fun. But I mean, I mean, it's gone now. But I mean, we still have a piece of land left, and they trying to get people out of there. Where are we going now? So, yeah, we're gonna be going um to the wild end, <laughs> the reds. We call it the wild end. Here through the row houses, the last part of Cabrini Green that's left. Visit Batman. Why you want me to meet him? He got a story to tell. <laughs> In his prime, he was a force to reckon with. What do you mean when you say he was a force to be reckoned with? He was a part of the Gangster Disciples. You know, that's about as far as I can probably take you with that. 